Hi, everyone. Welcome to Love, Laughs, and Lessons. This is Dr. Frankie here. And for those of you who don't know who I am, I am a clinical psychologist and the CEO of Little Gay Book Matchmaking and Little Black Book Matchmaking. I'm also a board certified sex therapist and a dating and relationship expert. And I am so thrilled to be here with another amazing matchmaker in our matchmaking series. So thanks all of you for tuning in. And I am going to hand it over to my amazing co-host, who is awesome. Go ahead, introduce yourself. I'm Denise Ray, her amazing co-host, who is awesome. <laughs> I'm also a matchmaker. I know. <laughs> you gave it to me, so I ran with it. <laughs> uh, I'm also a matchmaker and relationship coach. And I work with Dr. Frankie as her client service director at Little Gay Book Matchmaking Service. And I am super excited to introduce our guest today, Maya Maria Brown. Uh, Maya is a matchmaker at the matchmaking agency of Lamarck Thomas. The agency combines the art of matchmaking with the science of love to provide a conscious approach to finding your ideal relationship. Now, Maya is a Swedish American queer performing artist and received her master's degree in counseling psychology, drama therapy from the California Institute of Integral Studies. She has worked with relationships for, from many angles. Uh, including as a couples therapist, a relationship expert, and an app for healthy relationships, and of course, a matchmaker. So her approach is personable, creative, empowering, and holistic. Maya loves helping people know themselves better so they can be ready to build the best relationship that they have ever dreamed of. So welcome, Maya. I'm so happy again to have you here. Can you start off, and I ask this question all the time, share how you how the matchmaking began. How did you become a matchmaker and what inspired you to pursue um, this career? Sure. Well, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. It's very special to be here. Um, my journey to being a matchmaker is a little bit um, roundabout, I guess, in a way. I think since a young age, two things have been true. The first is that I somehow ended up being the person that people come to uh, for advice, to share their feelings. Um, even, you know, in, in grade school, I was that person. And so I've always had this, um, this love for connecting with people and making space for whatever they were going through. And the other thing that's always been true is my love for the performing arts and creativity. I'm a theater kid through and through, um, a musician, a dancer. So I tried to find as many ways as I could to combine those two things throughout my my upbringing and my uh, my education and eventually my professional career. So um, long story short, I got my master's in drama therapy, which is a counseling psychology program uh, that brings theater into the healing experience and brings healing into the theater experience. So it felt very suitable for me. And um, in the years since getting my master's, um, as you shared in my introduction, I've worked with, uh, I found myself working with relationships in a bunch of different ways and seeing just how important it can be in our lives to have a strong relationship. Um, and I think that's true for not only romantic or intimate relationships, also friends and family and intimacy in different ways. Um, but I've always been drawn to to that special, you know, romance and, and intimacy side of things and helping people cultivate the relationships they dream of. And, you know, if you do the math, matchmaking is kind of the perfect way to do that. Um, and working with Lamarck and the rest of our team, I get to bring my creativity into our process as well. So um it just feels so special to get to see these two true things about me flourish in such a meaningful way. That's awesome. And you go to CIS, you went to CIIS, which is where I went to mm -hmm. get my board certification in sex therapy. So oh, amazing. Cool. That's a great yeah. program. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. So mm -hmm. you incorporate coaching and your therapeutic mm -hmm. skills in your process mm -hmm. of um, helping your matchmaking clients have successful and healthy relationships. Is that, is that right? 
Yes, that is right. I think we, what we see in the industry is there's such a spectrum, um, both of how matchmakers operate and of what clients are looking for. You know, some people really thrive in the that checklist and finding those rare gems who meet all those criteria. And then we're sort of on a different part of the spectrum where we go deeper with our clients and we really put a lot of time and energy and personal attention on um, you know, understanding each client's childhood, their past relationships, what gets in the way of them having the relationship they dream of. And then once they're in an introduction, really going through the coaching process to help them lay that initial foundation when it is a good match. And so I think both approaches and other approaches all have merit depending on what a client is looking for. Um, and just with my background in, in mental health and psychology, I feel that our approach of, of the deeper exploration um, lends itself well to, to my skill set. Yeah. And we're kind of unique, just having an education mm -hmm. in psychology and human behavior. Mm -hmm. Super, super helpful. I've found. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. when you bring people together, right. It's like, it's important to be able to help support them in developing that foundation that you're referring to mm -hmm. and acquiring skills to maintain a relationship for some like longevity, right? Definitely. It's hard. I mean, it's <laughs> tough out there for sure. I think one of my favorite analogies about that process, have you heard of the hedgehog's dilemma? No, 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 it's, it's not, it's kind of niche, but um, it comes from, it's sort of an analogy where um, in reality, hedgehogs, um, they want to be close to each other when it's cold so they can huddle together for warmth. But as we know, hedgehogs have those little spikies, they're quills, I guess porcupines have quills, maybe hedgehogs too, but their, their spikies kind of get in the way and they end up poking each other and then staying farther apart than they want to. And the hedgehog's dilemma is sort of putting that analogy towards human relationships where, we might have the biggest desire in the world to be close to someone, but our spikes, and that could be our, our trauma, our triggers, our unprocessed barriers to intimacy, they can get in the way and we end up poking each other. And so it's such a, it's a lot of work and it's such an, an art form almost to learn how our spikes can kind of ebb and flow together and how we can, you know, fit them like puzzle pieces instead of just poking each other and running away. I love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hedgehog dilemma. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it just, I can think of my relationship even right now and how our spikes poke each other. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yep. It's real and it's okay. As long as we keep trying to maintain that closeness anyway. Right. <laughs> Figuring out how to work, work with our spikes and mm -hmm giving one another grace and having patience yeah. and understanding that that poking has nothing to do with us personally, really. As yeah. as yes. Other stuff. That's yeah. <laughs> totally That's other stuff. That's so good. Mm -hmm. That's so good. So what does, you know, tell us a little bit more about your process. Someone um, comes to your agency and kind of walk us through what that looks like for them. Mm -hmm. Because I, I know that you, you mentioned that you go deep. What does that look like? And for our listeners, because like we understand that's like, you know, matchmaker lingo. What does that mean to <laughs> them? <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, so we have a pretty thorough onboarding process. Um, typically when a client uh, joins us, they're with us for one year. Um, and so the first couple of months is really that groundwork. And there might be introductions happening early on, but the focus of that time is to help us get to know the client in meaningful ways and for the client to understand themselves in new ways. So we'll have longer sessions in those first few weeks where one of them is focused on what we call the life journey. So we're kind of walking through a client's life with them and seeing you know, what was present in the high parts of your life and what was missing in the low parts of your life and what have you learned from those experiences? How do you understand them today um, to really help them integrate their, their past into their present? 
Um, we'll do, you know, another session where we're looking at their past relationships and really digging into what they want to keep from those, what they don't want to replicate in the future. And one of my favorite sessions is when we do what we call the dream visualization, where we go through um, almost a meditative journey with the client where they're brought into the future when they're in the relationship they desire. And we're really exploring, you know, what that relationship looks like, and especially what that relationship feels like. And in building, it's sort of like a world building exercise where the client is really transported to that time. And one of the key takeaways of doing that exercise is to help them hold on to the feeling that they're looking for in their relationship in a meaningful way. So it's probably not going to be the like fireworks that you feel in the first, you know, however many weeks or months of a relationship. But when you go deeper, some clients end up really finding that sense experience of safety and security or that sense experience of curiosity and wonder about their their partner and their relationship and um, and that way they can hold on to that feeling and learn how to recognize it when they meet someone new so those are just a few examples of the the deeper work that we do at the beginning um and after that we fall into more of a rhythm of um you know introductions exploring profiles together going on dates and then processing those dates together with that coaching so there's a flow to the year long journey with us um but the deep work is is especially in those first couple of months mm. curiosity and wonder like i think that is mm -hmm. those are two things that are so important to mm -hmm. be able to tap into as we're putting ourselves out there in the dating, yeah. on the dating journey, I think mm -hmm. more people would really benefit from being curious instead of looking to like, you know, check off the list <laughs> and be curious about learning who is yeah. this person? What makes this person tick? You know, what can I do different? What can I bring to the table? <laughs> what do they bring to the table? You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And so many things could get in the way of curiosity, right? I think some people I see they're really stuck in what is this person thinking about me? Like, is this outfit the right choice? And did I laugh appropriately at their last joke and things like that? And being, you know, so self-aware and, and afraid of the impact we're having on the other person can really prevent us from having that curious open mind. And, and likewise, sort of the opposite, what you said, Dr. Frankie, of you know, are they checking all of my boxes? You know, there that can be a sort of closed way of being mini curious instead of having this open heart and open mind to just really discover who this person is and how I feel when I'm with them. Yeah. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Like you just never mm -hmm. know what we yeah. see on paper. I mean, we get surprised as matchmakers sometimes, right? I mean, oh yeah. Well, yeah. So for sure. that. Yeah. So when did you get started? When, how many years have you been doing matchmaking? Um, I've been doing it for the past couple of years. Um, I'm not so many years out of grad school, so still, you know, still fresh in the field, but, um, between my years of, of couples therapy and working as a relationship expert, I felt the matchmaking wheels turning already, you know, as I was working with people who were far or farther along in their relationships, I also started seeing possibilities for new relationships all around me. So it was sort of informally in the works for a while. Um, but it's been a, a couple of years of formally working as a matchmaker. I always say like early on the way I realized um, I was naturally doing it anyway. But when I became a therapist, <laughs> I was sitting in my office thinking, geez, I wish I could match my 9 a.m. with my 3 p.m. And you just <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that would be a breach of confidentiality. Can't do that. So how can I make, no. you know, how can I help <laughs> support my clients, my single clients that are floundering? And that was like 20 years ago, you know, when, when mm. dating apps were, were, they worked for us more successfully. Yeah. And now it's just, yeah, yeah it's been, it's, it's tough. a different well, world out there. Different world. Yeah. yeah. So now we're seeing more and more matchmakers like yourself 
coming <laughs> on the scene, which is exciting because there's more yeah, demand and more awareness, especially because now matchmaking is main is in mainstream media. Mm-hmm. you know with Indian matchmaker and Jewish matchmaker mm-hmm. and yes. so, on. so <laughs> that's helping mm-hmm. I think folks realize that there's other avenues to finding love absolutely I I don't know about you you too but I find you know I am regularly when people ask what I do and I tell them I'm getting the oh my gosh like that's a thing or <laughs> oh I think I saw you know there's still a lot of surprise and um and novelty about it but I bet, you know, five years from now, people will be like, oh, that's cool and then move along because it'll be even more integrated into the culture and how people meet each other. Um, but it's still, even though it's an ancient profession, right? Yeah. <laughs> like really ancient, I think in terms of in sort of the secular world and and the Western world, it's maybe still kind of a fresh concept for a lot of people. If, and and yeah, and as well as you know, living consciously, right? So as mm-hmm. we as we strive in this Western world to be more aware and more um, more self aware and more conscious about how we're living and what we're manifesting, now mm-hmm. matchmaking even comes into play because if you can manifest yourself, you know, a job and this lifestyle, why not then manifest mm-hmm. the mate? Why not? be the best that you could be so that you can have this amazing life and that that's I really love what you said about you know the way you you're weaving the the drama therapy and the matchmaking and I just have like a vision in my head of what that Mm -hmm. could look like and opening people's hearts and you know Mm -hmm. yeah can you can you just give us a little bit more about what that looks like because I'm sure people are curious about it like I'm Mm -hmm. My mind went to dance therapy and movement. (laughs) (laughs) Totally. I mean, you're not far off. Um, Drama therapy, dance therapy, music therapy, and art therapy are all kind of, you know, cousins or siblings in the the mental health world. Um, But yeah, I can give a little taste. I think, you know, drama therapy, I think of it as a toolkit that a therapist can have. And there are so many different approaches to working with a client and drama therapy just happens to be a little bit more theatrical than, than some of the others. And I think an example of what it could look like in a, in a matchmaking context, working with a client is, um, drama therapy can be a really great way to really distinguish the different parts of yourself that are coming into play in a scenario, Um, so if, for example, I'm speaking with a client and they're telling me, you know, on this date, I was really trying to be present, but I just had this, you know, nagging feeling that this, it wasn't right. You know, it just didn't feel right. So what I might do as a drama therapist is invite that part of them, the part that was telling them this isn't right into the room in a literal and physical way. We'll pull up another chair. I'll have them sit in that chair, take a moment to really inhabit and embody that part. How does that part sit? What does that part sound like? And then I'll speak directly to that part. You know, I'll say, you were telling, you know, person X here that, that the date didn't feel right. What was coming up for you? And you know, have you come up before? Do you typically have a lot to say? And it just gives you really a direct line into the those different sort of pieces of your intuition or parts of your past, right? You have a guilt, if there's a guilty part, there's an angry part, there's the teenage defiant part that doesn't want to like anyone, <laughs> you know, there's the the wounded child who didn't get the love that it wanted. And Drama therapy can let you bring those parts into the room physically and, and I can speak with them. They can speak with each other. I can sort of guide this almost like a play unfolding, but of course the person doesn't need any acting experience. What matters is that they know these parts of themselves and, and that's enough, right? So that's one way to kind of play around with the things that are coming up for our clients every day um, in a way that could really shake things up and help them understand better. I love parts work. It reminds me of internal family Mm -hmm. systems. Totally. Same family for sure. Yeah. So just recognizing that we all are made up of different parts and it's Mm -hmm. not so black and white. It's way more our psyche and our minds are so much more complex than that. Yeah. Yeah. 
to give space to all those parts is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really amazing for me anyway, seeing the difference between talking about a part versus embodying it and speaking directly to it. It's, it's just a different way to understand it, but it can be really special. Powerful for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Could you share like your, the first match that you made, um, successful match, how that Mm. came about, you know, like who the players were? (laughs) Sure. Well, I must say, you know, one of our agency's core values is being discreet. So um, of course I can't get into personal details, but I think, um, yeah, I think the, one of the, my earliest matches that I, the process was just so powerful was um, a woman who really wanted to find her person, like very motivated. Right. And not every client is super motivated, even if they're, you know, showing up for the service, they, you know, but, but she was really, she felt intellectually really ready. Um, But what we were finding throughout these initial introductions was she just kept feeling stuck. And even with some potentially great matches, they just weren't really going anywhere. And so it took a little bit of convincing, but she agreed to pause the introductions for a little while. I didn't put a, a date on it, but I said, we're not going to meet anyone new right now. And we're just going to do the work. Right. And I'm very clear with my boundaries. I'm not operating as a mental health professional, you know, in this context, I am serving as a matchmaker. Um, but within that role, we really dug deep into what these barriers were and to really understand that even though intellectually she wanted to meet someone, she had some wounds that hadn't been addressed or processed or healed that were just sort of like fire alarms going off in her head anytime she met someone. And so she, she dove into the the process and um, we really worked on what some of those barriers were and I don't think it was the first person she met after that, but not many. Once we resumed the introductions, it was maybe two or three people in. Um, she met someone and it was just night and day, uh, her feedback after that first date. I could really tell that her mindset had completely shifted and she was showing up as a much more whole and open version of herself than she ever had before. And so really just seeing the fruits of her labor pay off in in having this, um, you know, this special new relationship flourish, it was, it was powerful. Yeah. Life-changing. For, and mm-hmm. it's so funny because it's not just life-changing for our clients, for us mm-hmm. too, as the witness. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just amazing. I, I don't think that people understand how much we enjoy that, that success and why we work Absolutely. and why we're so passionate about what we do. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, we care so deeply, right, about each and every client and in different ways. And and so seeing them, you know, fall in love, certainly, but in a way for me, it's, it's even more about coming into themselves and becoming the person they knew they could be to be ready for that relationship. That's the, the big payoff for me, I think. Yeah. I think even the most challenging clients are, there's, reward in it, right? It's like (laughs) you get to see, you know, the shifting happen or the evolution, the slope. It's just, it's not, it's not like a a, a quick boom, you know, some big thing happens. It's a gradual process Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, we get rewarded throughout just watching that progress and seeing them blossom and um, Mm -hmm. say yes more than no um, to opportunities and suggestions, feedback Mm -hmm. from us. So that leads me Mm -hmm. to my next question for you, which is like, what's your ideal matchmaking client? Oh, wow. (laughs) Um, That's a a great question and a tough one, because just sort of flipping through my mental Rolodex of my clients, they're so different from one another. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint, you know, the, the qualities, but I think, I mean, someone who feels ready to, to show up for this process, I think is, is important. Right. And that doesn't mean they're ready 
they, they feel they know they're ready to meet their person tomorrow, but ready to go on a journey, you know, ready to build trust first with me and with themselves and ultimately with a partner, you know, that openness, I think can be super, super helpful. Um, and I think someone who believes, right. I think, I will always hold the optimism and see the light at the end of the tunnel for my clients. And they will go through periods when they don't feel that themselves. And that's understandable. But if they have a a core belief that love is possible, um, then I think we get to bask in that together. And the whole process feels positively skewed and positively oriented, even the tougher times. Um, So yeah, that's, that's what comes to mind. (laughs) What if you got a tough client that you're not able to reach? Like they're resistant and Mm -hmm. they're not quite sure your approach or the possibilities Mm -hmm. and they feel disillusioned and (laughs) this is the last spot or place for them. You know, they're (laughs) seeking some solution and they're not that open. Oh yeah. I've have had worked with plenty of people like that too. And honestly, it's, it's exciting in a different way, I think, because I don't see their resistance or their barriers as problems. I, I honestly, it sounds kind of cheesy, but I honestly see them as opportunities, <laughs> right? Because I, I really loved learning about relational psychology, um, which is viewing the, the relationship between therapist and client as fertile ground for um, you know, the client's relationships with other people. So if there's a lack of trust between my client and myself in the role of matchmaker, or if there's skepticism or a lack of hope, that's probably showing up in their other relationships too, and in their potential relationships. So that's perfect. I mean, that's what we're here to work with. Right. And so I think, you know, patience is important on both sides. Um, But another one of our core values at the agency is being edgy. And so, you know, my colleagues and I, we're not afraid to to kind of poke a little bit and, um, you know, to push when we see an opportunity for change and to to pull back when we see space is needed. And, um, you know, so it's it's a different kind of feeling working with a client who has a lot of resistance, but certainly not a worse experience. Um, I think it's yeah, there's a lot of fertile ground there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love your approach. It's very humanistic. Like you just, <laughs> yeah. the, that all humans have the potential for mm-hmm. growth and more. It, it's a very positive, abundant place, I think, to approach yeah. as a practitioner and matchmaker. And so that's mm. awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I just, I believe that, and, you know, science also tells us that loneliness is one of the biggest problems in, in our world. And I'm very committed to trying to eradicate loneliness as much as I can. And, you know, that's the way I do it most directly is to create more love relationships through the people I'm matching. But I think that also applies to having a positive relationship between client and matchmaker. And if they can feel that I see them as a human, I embrace all parts of them and I'm rooting for them, then I think that's an important step in their journey too. And it comes from such a genuine place for me. So it feels very natural to, to take that client centered approach and really, you know, really be on their side. Yeah. Good. I love it. I think that's the most important, right? The the relationship Mm -hmm. starts with our client Mm -hmm. and us in order to be successful. So to be willing to sort of, you know, to take a little risk and trust and know that we're capable Mm -hmm. and we've got experience and Mm because they're handing the controls to us in a way. And a lot of our clients are really successful go-getters, high achievers, Mm -hmm. type A personalities. Yeah, It's hard for them to hand over those (laughs) reins. It's true. It's true. And and you're right. That's exactly why the relationship between us is so important and why, at least for me, I really try to be mindful of, you know, when do they need me to really take charge and say, trust me, this is the path and we're going to go for it versus mm-hmm. when do they need me to be a an empathetic and compassionate listener um, and to really key into what they're needing 
that day. Um, and you know, I, I, it's been so fun watching the Netflix shows because of course, having professional relationships with other matchmakers, we can learn a lot, but seeing the, the matchmakers in action is another story. And so sometimes I'm thinking, okay, do I need some Seema auntie energy? Do I need to show up and just say, no, this isn't going to happen this way. We're going to change. That's and, right, right. um, or, or, you know, do I, do I take the softer road? So it's, it's, um, yeah, it's fun to kind of channel these different energies based on what a situation is calling for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. How do you find balance? Because, you know, as a matchmaker, we deal with all these different personalities and as a coach, um, and, you know, you're intuitive, you're a bit of an empath, and then you have the experience and the knowledge. How do you find balance? How do you recharge yourself? Hmm. Yeah. Such an important question. I think, you know, my, my master's program at CIAS was very intentional about helping us all cultivate our own self-care practices and try to avoid burnout. And so it was kind of instilled in me from the beginning of as much as my inclination is to be of service, I'll be able to do that best if I'm taken care of myself. And so um, you know, for someone who is naturally a giver, that was a hard, hard journey to to start. And I think it's a lifelong one for me. Um, but I do try to be very mindful of my hours. You know, it'd be very easy to just day in and day out, be talking to the clients and meeting potential matches. But I try to really, you know, contain my work in into my work hours and not let it take over my life completely. Um, but then more on the emotional side, um, that's where my creativity comes in as well. You know, it's not like I can, you know, sit with my friends and release all my feelings about my clients to them because it's important to keep that confidentiality. Um, but if I can write a song about the feelings that I'm sitting with <laughs> after being with a client, or, you know, I might write a short play to just get some of these words out or, or something, um, it just helps me keep my energy moving and flowing. So I'm not feeling stuck. Um, and, uh, and yeah, exactly. As you said, Denise, it's, I, I feel what my clients feel and, and that I have my own feelings on top of it. So <laughs> it is important to, um, yeah, to keep those moving. Um, cause it can get heavy sometimes, you know, especially when we care so much and when our clients care so much and it just hasn't happened yet. Um, those days can be tough because we want it so badly for them. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's when I think it's important to be kind to ourselves and whether it's through creativity or going for a walk in nature or going to a kickboxing class or something just to, to keep those feelings, you know, not locked up inside. So tell us a little bit about the process. So if somebody comes to you and says they, they want to become a client, what should they expect? Mm -hmm. How does it work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the first step is they would probably speak with uh, Lamarck Thomas, who is the the founder and CEO of our agency, and and he helps you know get people set up um, initially, and then once they're assigned to a matchmaker, we'll set up those initial weekly sessions where we'll we'll do that deeper work I spoke of earlier, um, and then we'll start bringing in the introductions. Um, and I would say the, those first introductions are going to be much more exploratory. So I'll be honest with a client and say, you know, this person, they don't have this and that, that I know you're looking for, but they do have these things. And I think it'll just be interesting to see what happens when the two of you meet and, and then we'll take it one, you know, one introduction at a time. And, uh, and we learn from each one. And so I think one thing that our clients can expect is, um, that we really encourage an open mind, especially in those earlier days and those first few matches, you know, go out with someone, even if they don't look exactly like you want them to, or if they don't have that one quality you're looking for, um, because it's so much easier to learn about what a client wants and what a client especially needs when there are real people that they're meeting and we can talk about their actual qualities and the feelings that they had on the date. So 
that, you know, that's what I can expect from those earlier sessions. And then we'll hone in, right? We'll start to really get a clear sense of who this client's match is. Um, and, you know, it's my job, it's my team's job to go out and find that person for them. And more often than not, we do. So I think, you know, we, I, I don't know that any matchmaker can guarantee that you'll have the love of your life by the time our work is finished. Um, but what we do guarantee is that they will feel changed by their time with us, by the people they meet and by the process they go through and change for, for the better specifically. Mm -hmm. um, they'll know themselves more deeply. They'll have met some interesting people who, you know, might have challenged them in, in positive ways and, um, and really hopefully and, and likely is that they will find their love through this process as well. And how long do, do clients work with you? So typically for a year um, or less if they meet their person in the process um, and sometimes a little bit more, but, uh, but usually folks will, will be with us for about a year. And they go on how many dates on average? So they'll go on at least eight first dates. Um, again, fewer if one of those earlier ones is their person. Um, but we do say, you know, within the year, you'll go on at least eight, but really depending on the client and what they're looking for and how open-minded they are, um, it could be quite a few more than that. Um, right. but it, it, it does vary, but, um, but eight is the minimum. And I would say, with our approach, you know, they can really count on each of those eight being, um, you know, a close ish approximation to what they're looking for with, like I said, you know, there might be some explorations and, um, you know, we try to think out of the box a little bit because sometimes what we think we want is not what we actually want and maybe it's not what we need. So, um, so that's the open mind there, but we really do have a, an incredible network of, of really amazing people. So each introduction brings something special for, for the client. Do you offer your clients, um, rules, dating <laughs> tips or tools to, you know, because some matchmakers say no drinking, um, no intimacy, no, mm. you know, are there rules that you offer? So or suggest, I should say, suggest. Yeah, yeah. I would say not so much, probably a lot less than than other matchmakers. And I think part of that is to do with the fact that we are based in Sweden. Um, we have clients and and our network is is global. So we're a very international organization. Um, but being based in Sweden, Sweden is quite progressive when it comes to things like sex and gender roles and expectations. And so we really bring that mindset to our clients who are all around the world. Um, and, you know, we don't, we don't encourage or push rules around when to do this or that. Um, we do say, you know, it's probably a good idea to not get completely wasted the first time you meet someone and, <laughs> you know, things like that. But um, I would say when it comes to to things like rules, we do take a pretty individual approach, right? If, if a client is, um, you know, they, they haven't done a lot of big extravagant things in their life. Um, and then they're telling us, you know, for the first date, I think I'm going to you know, book a hot air balloon to take us around the world, I might say, probably let's dial it back and let's do something a little bit more in your wheelhouse where you'll be more comfortable, right? So that's like, in a way, I guess, enforcing a rule, but we don't have any hard and fast, you know, all of our clients have to do X, Y, or Z. I love it. We got some rules at our agency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it can be incredibly helpful. It's, again, I think just with all the different approaches that matchmakers take, they all hold merit depending on who the client is. So um, that's, I guess, one tip for, for clients looking to work with a matchmaker is find the matchmaker whose approach you jive with because there are many of us out there doing things very differently in, in different ways. So um, much like I encourage people to take the time to find a therapist they connect with. And sometimes that can take a few sessions, a few tries. You can do the same with a matchmaker because not every approach is going to speak to you. Um, yeah. so 
yeah, I love seeing how differently we all work from one another. That's what's exciting too about this matchmaker series that we're doing right now. It's so awesome Mm because we just back to back, we're hearing from different matchmakers and it's all, Mm -hmm. they're all different. They're, you know, niche focus of the population Mm -hmm. that they serve or Mm -hmm. um, whether they show photos or they don't show photos. Like that's, yeah. Do you show photos? Yeah. We, we do. Um, Definitely. We show our clients photos of potential matches. Um, but actually being inspired by the Jewish matchmaking show, um, what I inferred from the way she works is that I don't think she shows matches the client's photos. I think she just right. says, I have a person for you. You're going on a date next week. And then that's that. Yeah. So I was kind of like, you know, maybe there's something to that. And so we we're doing things a little bit case by case now. Um, but historically we have included photos, um, when yeah. we're introducing potential matches. That's how we do. We don't show photos. So it's, it's a blind right. date essentially Yeah, because they're working with us as matchmakers. We interview everyone, mm-hmm. we see them face to face. So it's like here mm-hmm. again, handing us the reins and saying, okay, yeah. I trust you. I'm going to go into this blind knowing that you got my back. And yeah, we don't show photos because um, we want people to show up and meet the whole person and and Mm -hmm. feel their energy, their vibe, their personality. And in a photo, it's a one dimensional image. It's like we, we, and you you can appreciate this as a therapist, we project what Mm -hmm. we want to see maybe from a previous ex something that we're afraid of seeing (laughs) and all of a sudden it's jumping at Mm -hmm. out at us from that Mm -hmm. photo just preconceived ideas so we suspend all that and we're like all right here now you're letting you're where you're a matchmaker (laughs) so let let us do this let us help you not in the way of yourself (laughs) yeah I think I mean I think that holds so many benefits that that you're speaking to so I completely agree. And and there have been plenty of times when, you know, telling someone about a potential match, you know, face to face or over the phone, they've been excited saying, oh, this person sounds really interesting, sounds great. And then I send the pictures and they say, oh, yeah, I'm not sure. Right. But I still want them to go on the date anyway. So it is a it is a conversation, I think, that in the field in general, we're all having. And sometimes I wonder you know, what would it be like to go in the other direction and to get videos of everyone and to show potential matches (laughs) videos of the other person, because then you're getting more than you get from a picture, right? You're getting the vibe, you're hearing the voice, you're seeing the movements. Um, But I think, you know, I think that can result in fewer introductions being made, right? It can be hard to get both people to to say yes when they're seeing and, and feeling the vibe in that way. But then when they do meet, um, there's maybe a, they have a head start because they already know there's attraction. They already know the vibe a little bit. So I think either way you go, it can go great or it can go terribly. Totally. Um, yeah. so Back yeah, we day. just, we're all just figuring it out. Right. Yeah. Back in the day, you know, before, before we were doing matchmaking this way, and maybe I'm dating myself a little bit, there were videos. You actually went into a matchmaking company and you created a video on a VHS. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you did did like a four four to five minute introduction and it was video. And then your video was shown to the potential client and and then you, they, Mm -hmm. Their video was shown. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so before. there's precedent, right? Nothing new under the sun, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so can can folks get into a free database at your company? Yeah. So so our um our network is completely free to be a part of. Um, it does take a little effort, and I think that's you know that's something that our clients really value, right? Because if we're bringing them a match who's not a client, they still want to know that that person is invested in this process. And so to make a profile with us, it's quite in depth. We have questions where we look in, you know, we ask you about yeah, sure your job and your lifestyle, but also your childhood and your family and your values and, you know, some of those deeper questions. Um, and then we'll have a, a consultation call with, with newer network members. So we, as the team can get a sense of who they are and, um, 
you know, get to know what they're looking for so that we can be more confident um, in proposing them to our, our clients um, if there's a potential match there. So um, I think it, it, it does take a little effort, but at the end of the day, I think it's a, a lot of people find it to be a very valuable process because even if we never have a match for them, right, because we are representing our clients and who knows who they're going to be looking for. Um, people tell us they still get a lot of value in answering those questions. And in that conversation with us, that even from those touch points, they're learning about themselves and they're gaining clarity on what they want in their life and what's important for them. Um, so I think, yes, it's financially free and it's not just, you know, a quick questionnaire that you finish in five minutes. Um, I think that brings value on all sides. Wow. That's amazing too, that, that all that time is invested and they haven't, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the skin in the game that they give is their time mm -hmm. and their, mm -hmm. you know, willingness to share about themselves, but mm -hmm. your, you and your team actually, you know, invest a lot in them as well. And I do think that clients I've heard it time and again, they're like, wait, but we're not both paying clients. How do I know that they're mm -hmm. serious about it? They're not just yeah, going to go on a date exactly. with me, right? Yeah. It's important <laughs> for everybody to have skin in the game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, our, especially with, with our agency, you know, our, our branding is that we are a very intentional and conscious and holistic matchmaking agency. So, um, you know, of course, anyone who comes into our network, anyone I'm going to propose to a client is, is going to be someone who values that and who is really looking for something real. Yeah. And you work with everybody, LGBTQ mm -hmm. plus plus and Yep. <laughs> sexuals. All, yeah. All genders, all sexual orientations, all are welcome. Awesome. Denise, do you have any other questions? No. All right. Maya, it was such a pleasure having you on. Tell folks how they can find you. How can they get into your free database? What social media <laughs> platforms are you on? And so on. Absolutely. Well, I think a good first stop is our website, which is lamarkthomas.com. And I imagine that'll be in the in the show notes. Um, but uh, you can also Google us and find us there. Um, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, uh, all with the Lamarck Thomas being our, our handle and our name. And then you can find us individual matchmakers on the website as well. Awesome. Wonderful. This was such a pleasure having you on. And Absolutely hearing Thank how you, you so do much. what you do and yeah, keep, keep doing it. It sounds amazing. You're, you know, I love how holistic and therapeutic and supportive mm -hmm. your process is. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. And I value both of you and your work so much as well. And thank you for doing this podcast. I think so many people are going to benefit from hearing your voices and the voices of your guests. So thank Aww. you so much. Oh, wow, you're Thanks amazing. So thank you, yeah, Maya. Maya. All thank right, you. listeners. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Everyone. Bye.